some time ago, I reviewed the Nikkor NU25 headlamp, and that was based on a recommendation from one of my viewers. And am I ever glad I took him up on that suggestion, because this has turned out to be really my go-to headlamp most of the time. Well, now Nikkor has sent me out one of their old classics brought back again, and that is the NU20 Classic. Smaller, lighter, and just about as capable. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. Before we get started, I do want to thank Nikkor for sending out the NU20 Classic headlamp so that I can share it with you. So as always, we'll go down to the tabletop where I'll briefly go over the key features, the physical and performance specifications, as well as the modes of operation for this light. But all important is I'll bring the NU25 back in so you can see what they look like side by side. And then, of course, we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. Before we focus in on the lamp itself, let me share with you what else it came with. This is the box that the light arrived in. Inside of the box, two things, manual with warranty information and a USB Type-C charging cable. Now, as far as the key features for this light go, it has a max output of 360 lumens. It has a max runtime of 97 hours. Now, it's 97 hours on the lowest, not the maximum, of course. It has special modes, including beacon, SOS, and slow flash. And of course, it has the white light, the red light, and a high value CRI white light as well. All right, let's go into the physical dimensions for this light. So it is 2.05 inches in this dimension, 1.3 in this dimension and 0.96 in this dimension. It comes in at a whopping 1.34 ounces. And of course, that's the reason people like to look at this light and why it's become so popular. I don't know if there's another light on the market as light as this with the same capabilities. It does have a built-in 500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. It is non-accessible, non-removable. I know that's important for a lot of people to know that. It does have an impact rating of one meter and a waterproof rating of IP66. Now, as far as the performance specifications go for the Nikkor NU20 Classic, I'm gonna be putting them all in the video description, of course, for your reference. So if you feel the need to skip ahead, go ahead and do that now. It is going to be broken down into three categories. The primary white light, this one here. The auxiliary white light, this one here. And of course, the red light, which beams out at the same spot. So with the primary light, it has a turbo of 360 lumens lasting for two hours. That in itself is actually quite impressive. It has a high of 200 lumens lasting for five hours. A medium of 38 lumens lasting for seven hours. And a low of one lumen lasting for 97 hours, so just over four days. It also does have a SOS and a beacon beaming out at 360 lumens. Now, for the auxiliary white or the floodlight, it beams out at 20 lumens lasting for 70 hours. It does in fact have a red light, and the nicest thing about this is you can access the red light without having to go through any of the white lights. The red light has a high of 13 lumens, which will last 12 hours, a low of one lumen lasting 53 hours, and it does have a flashing mode as well, which will beam out at 13 lumens. Now, as far as the operating system goes for the NU20 Classic, I think this is the feature I like most about this light, followed up obviously by its small size and its weight. But it has two buttons on top, an on-off power button, which does also switch between primary primary and secondary white light, and a dedicated red light button as well. Now, turning it on is just that simple. Press the button and it turns on. Now, I'll show you right now while it's still lit, there, there were the four indicators of battery strength, so each light representing 25% of the battery status. Okay, now, if I press it again now, it's going to turn off. But if I turn it on and then quickly tap, it will run through its one, two, three, and down again. So it's a matter of if you want to get to one of the higher beams, turn it on and tap to where you want to go. If you wait probably two or three seconds and hit it again, it turns off completely. So just a good feature, maybe a tiny bit of getting used to, but once you are and understand it, there's no surprises there and no guessing. You'll know how it works each, every, each and every time. Now, if you want to get to the floodlight, you press the power button, but hold it, and then the floodlight will come on. Just that simple, right? 
nothing to it at all. And why would you choose one? Well, obviously the floodlight will give you more cast immediate in your immediate area, whereas the primary light will cast out further, better for navigation going through the woods or along a trail. Now, when it comes to the red light, it's again, just a simple turn it on. If I leave it for a second or two and then hit it again, it'll turn off. But if I turn it on and tap it, wait for it, there you go. That's how you get through the different levels. So it's just a matter of tap once, tap quickly to get to the lumen setting you want, or wait for a second or two, tap it again, it'll turn off. So in the opening of the video, I mentioned that I had previously reviewed the Nightcore NU25, and then up until now, I considered this my go-to headlamp when I'm looking for something very light, very comfortable, and very easy to operate on my head. Well, now it's a toss-up. Which one do I like more? I think I'd still take either. I wouldn't, wouldn't feel in the least bit handicapped, but I'll just give you a couple of comparisons between the two. I won't go into detail on the NU25 because, of course, I do have a full separate review on this light. I will link that review in the video description and at the end of the video if you want to see more about this light specifically. But here are the things that you need to know. Obviously, the NU25 is bigger and heavier. Not a lot bigger. I'll just give you a few glances at it. You can see it's a little thicker front to back. Not so much in the across the width here to, and the height of it, but front to back is where the extra size comes in and a little bit heavier. Whereas the NU20 weighs 1.34 ounces, the NU25 weighs 1.5 ounces. Not a great weight di uh, difference at all. The other difference, of course, is in the performance. And again, not a huge difference. With a turbo of 360 lumens for the NU20 Classic, you would expect the NU25 to have, because it's a bigger light, a much higher turbo. Well, it has a higher turbo, but not by much, 400 lumens. So it'd be the run times, because obviously the NU25 has a larger battery in it. That's what's making up for the size and the weight. So it'd just be the run times that would be the difference. So it's just a matter of you deciding what's most important for you. The lightweight, easy carry, uh, and reasonable run times or the slightly heavier, slightly larger, longer run times. Either one of these lights will suit perfectly. Nighttime testing for the Nightcore NU20 Classic. Turn it on in its lowest. Not a lot of light in front of me. Take it up. And that's at its highest. I mean, this is a headlamp that's sufficient for the tasks intended for, but it's not casting out light a long way more of a flood than anything else. So the Nikkor NU20 Classic Headlamp. This is just exactly that, a true classic headlamp. It is well designed, it operates well, it's lightweight. I don't know, it's, I don't know how you can improve upon a light like this. Unless of course you needed a little bit more runtime and then you may want to look at the NU25. I don't think you can go wrong with either of these lights. It's just a matter of prioritizing which is the most important for you. Lightweight and smaller size, slightly heavier, slightly larger, but longer run times. I guess that's going to be up to you. And as I mentioned, I'll put the links to where you can take another look at the NU20 in the video description, along with all the technical specifications I just gave you and a link to the review where you can take a look at the NU25 if you're interested. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.